Hey, it's Kristen with Collision Hub, and welcome back to Repair University. Um, it's the Shop Talk series. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. We're out in the shop, and we got cool company I, chairs. I got I, shop Talk's taken. I think I'm going to call it Collision Living. I really do. I'm going to have to hurry to get this I trademarked. I want shop yelling, but you wouldn't let me do it. Yeah. No, that's another show. Oh. That's like the USA Network show or we whatever. We should just put me in an area of the shop and let me rant and yell and throw things. Well, you are you are in luck today, Larry, <laughs> <laughs> because... <laughs> The topic of this show is, is a major heartburn for the three of us. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is Mark and I both have insurance backgrounds and mm -hmm. you're 100% shop all the way, right? You're a purebred. Yes, I have <laughs> a little bit of shop background, or a little we're, bit of we're insurance sort of background, muggles. a lot of shop. Yeah, yeah, we're a little bit of muggle there. So, yeah. um, but we're gonna talk about rekey. Ugh. And this is something that we dialogue about online on a regular basis. The we also, singularly dumbest thing somebody could do? We also run into this a lot on shop audits. So, mm -hmm. um, Mark, because you're the nicer one of the two of us. Um, <laughs> and we admit that, right? Yeah. Um, I'll say it Except that. that guy in Texas didn't like me. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the yeah one he I still got me. the blame for that one. Oh. He yelled at me. <laughs> I know. And but I, I still I, got the blame. I know. But I know, but I'm getting lectured, and I feel like that they're talking about Larry, and then when it comes down to it, they were talking about Mark, and I was like... And I walk in, the guy goes, no, that's not him. It's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and I, I wanted to smash the guy in the hey, jaw. Hey, I just want to say that's the first time Larry's ever passed a lineup. <laughs> this, right? <laughs> that, was a, that was a good moment. I so. was actually insulted it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, why do people rekey? Because they think they have to. They've been conditioned so into it. So the insurance company brings an estimate in. They go, oh, let me rekey it real quickly so I can tell, you know, figure out what it actually is. And it's insane. Yeah. And back in the day, I remember when I had my shop, I had one person, that's all they did was rekey. And, and unfortunately, it was rekeying my estimating system into my management system. That was part of it, and then it became the insurance side, and we kind of just kind of got to right. it. But it's just, it's as insane as rekeying an insurance estimate as some customer coming in going, I just stopped at ABC Body Shop. They wrote this estimate, but I want you to fix it for this dollar amount, and I say, great, let me rekey into my system to see if I can fix it. It's insanity. Yeah, it's, it's, I, think, I think where it kind of started, a little bit of twofold, one, um, well, I don't even know if it's twofold. Shops started doing it because they saw the estimating system as the accounting system. Uh -huh. So it goes back to the what's the one thing that brings money into your shop? Well, it's the estimates. Instead of having a deep understanding of business and being able to run your accounting separate from estimates or whatever, we felt this deep desire that well, I have to match. I have to have an estimate that matches what the insurance company is paying. These have to match. Well, you got to remember the management systems were sold by who? Software companies that also were estimating companies. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, the other problem is the shops got into this thing that w with accounting, accounting would be like, well, you, you have 5,000 here that you have in the system and we only collected 4,000. Where mm -hmm. do we get the other thousand from? They don't right. run a business. So they, they had to conform to getting underpaid for jobs. I mean, I, the only time I rekey an estimate is if I'm doing an investigation on something or a report yeah. where I have, let's say, uh, an audit text estimate and I have a shop CCC right. estimate or vice versa, and I'll rekey it in that same system to sh and lock it and create a supplement to show, look, right. this is their system, this is what's missing because I want all the, you know, mm -hmm. all the overlaps and stuff. Right. So but you're I saying there might be a reason to rekey. That's only for an investigation okay, or, or a lawsuit or something, <laughs> to, to show there's a, there's here's, one apples, reason. Right. here's apples to apples. Yeah. Um, this is what is not included, and this that's is the not, automatic way of using it. But that's not fixing the car. But right. that's not no. for your so, shop, so you're then, right, you're wrong. If we drive deeper, right, we had shops do it because they thought it was part of their accounting system. Mm -hmm. Now we have shops that'll say, it makes it easier to negotiate. <laughs> Yeah, well, it makes it easier to show them S1s. Yeah. It makes it easier for so, to, to do somebody else's job. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's what you do. It doesn't make it easier to negotiate. So I'll, no. be, I'll, I'll be flat out honest with you. It makes it harder for you to negotiate. Because harder. now it makes it a lot, lot harder. And, and shops that are no longer rekeying, when they make that break, go, oh, my God, I can't believe what I, I was losing. I wasted all this money all this time. Yeah. It wasn't the time. What I was losing in the process of getting a claim settled by by rekeying an estimate so so it does not make things easier to negotiate but it's and like losing your pair of comfortable shoes right right because it's not as comfortable on the first couple times you do that. right but what we've effectively done is you've created a, a bill payer 
that is incompetent. Yeah. Because if they, I mean, literally, I've watched online lately when several shops have made the cut to no longer rekey. They, it, whether it's the people online or you see some of the emails going, well, I can't believe you've made it just so much harder. I don't know what I'm going to do to not have a, a rekeyed estimate with supplements. I, how am I going to do my job? Well, so what you convinced them to do when you did the rekey was they immediately go to the S1s. Yeah. Right? And that's the only thing that their attention is focused on on the S1s or the S2s or the S3s or whatever. And they either decide right then, is it a yes or a no to that S1 or S2 mm -hmm. line? Yeah. And if it's a yes, they enter it, mm -hmm. right? If it's a no, now they're going to say, we don't pay for that or whatever. So you've got them into paying dollars, not scope. And then, and then what's even worse damage. is they say, we're going to pay for these certain S1s, and they hand you back their estimate again, and then you rekey it again. Right. It's All insanity. Right. Uh, it's right. it's back and forth. Uh, I've to what I taught shops is you write your original estimate, your final bill basically on the first day, you hand it to them, supplement one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You keep handing the same one, but on f the first supplement, I've had shops that I've taught, you go to Staples and you buy the cheap plastic rulers and spray them all red, like 10 of them. And when adjusters come in, you hand them the original estimate for the supplement and you hand them a red uh, a ruler. I haven't heard this yet. And they, oh, where's my S1s? What do I do? Here, look, I'll show you. You open up the paper, you put it out, you take the red rule, you put it on the first line and go, now check that off on yours and check it off on mine. And go line by line. I made it red so it sticks out better. And yeah. when you're done, come back and see me. Yeah. Now, if we do ST, do we give them two rulers or just one? Yeah. No, just one now, rule, you okay. go now, again. Because helps. you obviously missed it on the second yeah. time yeah. you were there. Now, if we go back, let's think about this. I, I started writing estimates, handwritten out of the Mitchell books. So did I. We, we, we won't on even. On your eye stone. Right, on my eye stone. <laughs> now, when was the last time you ever saw an, a shop that rewrote you never did. an estimate? Never. We didn't do that because what? It was, it was so labor intensive. But it sure. comes along the computer and suddenly we're like rewriting and sending stuff back. If I took you back to handwritten estimates, none of y'all would rekey an estimate yeah, ever no. again because mm -hmm. you would be upset about it. But so here's the principle of how that works. And I explained it in one of our negotiating classes is that quite honestly, it became a little bit of an innocence, right? We had a change in the insurance industry. I used to go in and handwrite estimates at State Farm. We hand wrote it. We hand wrote it. We hand wrote estimates for a while. And so when you went to a shop, you were very much discussing scope. You were coming to back then. Still, everything was more of an agreed price mm -hmm. than it was a line by line thing. Yep. But we weren't looking for it's always price. Or, it was never or, items or arguing any of that stuff, right? So now I've convinced you in this model that you're actually supplementing yourself three, four, five, six, seven times. So what does that do? When you tell me that it helps you negotiate, it actually helps me, I'll put my insurer hat on, it helps me negotiate. Because what I'm convincing you to do is negotiate down to a middle. So you're constantly coming down. Now think about it, shops. How many times have you gotten to supplement five or six and they're like 50 or $100 off or $200 off and you go, oh, forget it. I don't want to go through this rekey process again and ask for another supplement. I'm just going to write it off. Sounds pretty cool, huh? 50 times how many cars a month? 40,000 cl uh, claims a day come through the department, right? And if I save $200 on all 40,000 of those a day, what does that add up to? Huge money. That's huge, major huge money. money. So by creating a process in which it is labor intensive on your part with redundancies and just frustration, I have convinced you through your own, I don't want to say laziness, because we're kind of pretty committed Ignorance. to this. Your own, you're, you're cutting yourself off at the knees and the head, right? Well, and it goes to proof because ask any shop, how many times in your entire career, your 30, 40, 50 plus year career, have you ever had an insurance adjuster write more than you wrote? I've, I, I had to come in a lot and say, man, you missed all this stuff. No, it doesn't happen. Yeah, no. no. So, so it's just. I've, I've talked to adjusters actually said to me, Larry, you won't believe it, I was at this shop. Yeah. I wrote like three thousand dollars more than he did. I don't know what to do. You know, like the guy just had no clue. He was like, "Oh, you know, can you give me the fifteen hundred to fix this?" He's like, "I'm at seven thousand. What do I yeah. do?" Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the guy had no clue. But, it, it, it's, it, but it, it's a rare. It, no, you don't see it. They get you, like you said. You get. They get you to come down to them. Don't play on their field. They have no business yeah. in this business. They're coming in to pay for the customer. Yeah. They're the bill payer. They're the it's, bill payer. It's That's Chinese it. water torture. I know that if I just nickel and dime you enough, you will eventually walk away. Sometimes you'll walk away from big money. I, I've seen shops give up at seven, eight hundred dollar difference between their estimates. And then they go, well, I can't pass that on to the customer. And I, you know, I, it's whatever. So the shops eat money all the time. In the insurance world, no one is sitting there going, um, 
wow, that shop really is a good team player, and I'm so glad that they were, were willing to sacrifice that supplement and take care of the customer. We're just no. laughing at you. I mean, yeah. bottom line, we're just laughing at you that you, you actually took that I can tell away. you, as, as an adjuster <laughs> back in the day, we would always sit around and talk about what victories we had over the shops. Yeah. That was always the, the locker oh, room yeah. talk. Oh, yeah. I got them to come down to blah, yeah. blah, blah. And they sent me a supplement. They thought they were going to get paid such and such, but I, I, I don't was know. Able you remember to... those calls, those oh, conversations? Yeah. Oh, well, that's the one thing about we don't have antitrust, so we would all meet up at the yeah. McDonald's totally. and we all knew each other. And if I had a problem with Larry's shop, I called, you know, the Allstate guy and we'd have a conversation and go, hey, I was just in there the other day. We all knew each other, right? Yeah, sure. Um, and that was when segregation used to be face to face. Yep. Right. And we didn't have segregation units and some of the other things. So um, here's the thing that I think bothers me the most out of it, right? Is you and I, will, all three, will go in shops mm -hmm. and we will hear from shops and we'll also hear it posted online. Yeah. I don't have time to do all this research and OEM procedures. And Kristen, you're telling me it's going to take me an hour to, to look through the OE to find everything I need to repair Who's that car. Who's paying me for that? Who's paying me for that? Yeah. Huh. Mark, how long does an average rekey take? Uh, it depends. You know, some of them you can do 20 minutes, half an hour, but you've got to consider that it's going to be about an hour and a half. Yeah. Now, somebody out there is going to go, I type faster than that, and I'm faster. I can do it in an hour. Uh, not Whatever. if you have different systems. Like you're right. taking an order text to a CCC yeah, exactly. type of thing or vice versa. Yeah. Now you got to make sure the numbers match and the labor oh, match. I know, I know. So let's just say it's an hour and a half. Yeah. It's an hour and a half average per estimate that you really shouldn't be doing anyway for all the other reasons we just talked about. But the reality is then we could take that hour and a half and go research OEM stuff. And right. you know, we'll yeah. have time for that. So I love it. I love it when I'm standing there and the shop tells me they don't have time, they can't dedicate somebody to do research or a blueprint technician. And then I interview all the estimators, so that's part of the auditing process. And all of them are saying that about half of their day goes to Reiki. Yep. Now, if you have a shop that decides that they're not going to like do the physical labor, they're going to outsource to some third-party company that still does costs it. Money. They're still paying money per yeah, right. whatever, right? Well, and in fact, you know, if you consider that, you know, and I don't want to be exact with the math here, but you might be spending between thirty-five and fifty dollars in labor and material, you know, not materials, but in uh, benefits and all that, thirty to fifty dollars per claim on the first rekey. If you actually do the math with what your estimators pay. right, right. So that's a lot of that's a lot of money. It's real money. And if I pay somebody else, that's real money. That's real I money. Have to do. Either way. But but I, I'll complain about OEM research taking time, but I'm setting there rekeying estimates. Or a blueprint department, or having a, a quarterback in the oh. shop, foreman, compliant guy. Now they'll, they'll complain about everything because they want to stick to the Trojan horse that came into this industry and follow what they showed them. And they just want to st sit on with blinders and just follow along because this has made my job yeah. easier. Yeah. I can't get my people to do this. This is so much easier. I don't want to be chasing money. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Well, the, I mean, like I said, the insurers love it. It's allowed them to have a lower level of workforce, mm -hmm. right? I don't really have to train them. I don't have to teach them anything. It takes skill to go in and, you know, especially it takes a lot of skill to take a Larry estimate and come in and you know my my adjuster wrote 50 lines larry's got 300 and i've got to i've got to figure out where Sorry we're at out, and yeah. i've got to re that takes a lot of skill mm -hmm. that 90 percent of what the field appraisal no. force right now can't do so no. th those are problems there but larry you brought up a great point because the other thing it costs you is i go into shops all the time that either don't have a drp or have drps that don't have software requirements but i ask them and they have all three software systems those aren't cheap no and you no. ask them, well, why do you have them? Well, when the adjuster comes in, we've got to be able to rekey it so we can talk apples to apples. No, we don't. We don't talk apples to apples at all. Here's my estimate for fixing the car. Right. You figure it out. It's pretty Yeah, simple. but now I'm not being cooperative and I'm being, you know, I'm the only one. Yeah. You're, yeah. I get you're not cooperative a lot. Yeah. You know, I know. And right? you're not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> I get hostile. Yeah. But, you know, but the other problem is that when you're dealing with, like, let's just say CCC, and we go to a Mitchell or we go to you know, Autotex, it doesn't matter. There's certain things that I would catch in CCC, but now I'm converting into Mitchell, which doesn't estimate the same way. I could actually be losing operations in right. that process. Yeah, you're not, yeah. you're not, because you're, you're trying to compare apples to apples when it's really apples to oranges, right. and you got to know each, each system right. differently. Yeah, so we got to actually really rewrite the entire estimate in the right. other system, so, which takes longer. So it happens like when I'm in a shop and the insurance company comes in and goes, Yeah, but we wrote in Auditex, and you're writing in CCC, and you know, our numbers just aren't matching. And I just very politely go, Well, that's not my problem because here are my numbers in my system. This is what it's going to take to fix time. the car. 
I've had to rekey is because I'm, we're going to a lawsuit with it. They're yeah. suing, and I'm proving apples to apples. Like, well, yeah. here's their system, right. and I can prove right. in their system it's within yeah. five, ten percent. Go figure it way. out. Do your yeah. job. That's what the job. And I was very adamant. I used to get mad at my adjusters when they would ask the shops to rekey and make supplements. I'm paying you to figure that out. Your job well, is to you adjust the now, laws. But most of them can't, Kristen. Facebook, Let's just tell the truth. Yeah. You notice on Facebook, a lot of guys are posting the emails from these. Well, we will not honor a supplement unless you rekey. Can't do that. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You're going to actually try and force this now? But you know what? Right. The shops will actually do it, though. Well, they feel and like they have the to. And that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. So, so the other thing, the reason why Larry and I and then Mark, you know, you're right there with us, why we are so adamant against rekey is for when we think about what's coming down the pipe with artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and also what Larry and you and I have ran into in court on multiple occasions, rekeying validates the insurance company's processes and procedures. And when I say that, it's not their process of handling claims. You're validating their way of thinking a car should be repaired. Yeah, because when and you bring so, that estimate in, you rekey it. Uh -huh. Your first estimate, your initial estimate. You agree. Uh, you actually agreed to what they put on their original. Right. Now, you don't actually understand that you actually did agree because you actually don't. Right. But the fact that you pushed that button, you actually agreed, and then you had to supplement from there. Right. So now that process is under now your this could name, be a legal problem. your company, it's attached to you. And let's say I'm going to, you know, Larry has sued me as the insurer mm -hmm. and Larry's got this 300 line estimate. I now go to court and go, well, here's all these estimates from all these shops that basically say Larry's charging too much and doing unneeded operations. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a market repair and all of that. Every time you rekey, you validate. Right. So you are also you're validating what they're doing, but you're also giving a false database for right. artificial intelligence. Because at the end of the day, that's all driven off of the databases. Whoa. And that's so it. I would love to have here's the insurance estimate over here, yeah. but here's my shop estimate over here, and it has all the lines well, and everything. Well, you know, it's no need. different than a shop who goes into court, and I've been there before. Sometimes I'm on the opposite side, and they fought for the fact of oh, we wanted to change the quarter, they didn't want to change it, they wanted to repair it, so we attempted to repair. So in other words, you did an incorrect repair because you just listed all the reasons why you couldn't repair this quarter. So you did an incorrect repair just to prove it to them basically are committing fraud. So you're telling me. You're going to lose. You knew, yeah. knowingly went ahead and did a repair that you knew you couldn't do because you just proved to us. And your expert's right. I'll sit there in the stand and go, you know what, your expert Mark Austin was 100% right. You can't repair that quarter because it is. But you went ahead and repaired it anyway to show it to them and try and make more money off the job by fraudulently trying to repair the car. Um, humana, humana, humana. Yeah, and now, now you lose. Yeah. So your whole argument, don't validate anything. If you feel it's got to be replaced, replace it. If you feel it's got to be repaired, it's your liability. Just like you write your repair bill and just keep handing back the same repair bill, don't change it. Don't validate with supplements. The only supplement I feel that there should be for is maybe the final dealer resets because yep. i got to show you a bill that it was performed okay i got no problem with supplement right. one or some part price differences sure. right. that came in supplement is different than rekey right you may supplement yourself for part part changes or whatever you may supplement it's yourself because totally something doesn't work later on supplement and rekey are two different things we're not saying you never right. write a supplement but we're larry, saying larry if i do all this like you're talking about i might make the insurance company mad Oh, that's good. Then you're doing your job. Oh. <laughs> that's all I do is make them mad. I mean, if you're not making them yeah. mad, then you're not doing your job. So, so there is honestly, I mean, and we've looked at it through nine million lenses. There is zero reason at all for a shop to rekey. Correct. There may be a contractual obligation to rekey. You know, sometimes if you're going to be with the DRP or that kind of thing, and you've agreed in writing to actually do what there is, you may have to do it. Just get all the conversation that we're right. having here of how ridiculous and time consuming it is. Right. So it's just time to kind of, it snuck in, mm -hmm. snuck in when we went to computerized estimating. Mm -hmm. It was a negotiation process. And I don't think shops, I think really, I need shops to really understand having you rekey estimates was a negotiation tactic. It was a way to get you to bid against yourself. Well, and if you have that aha moment, I think it'll change the way you look at this in The completely. difference is, is that insurance companies talk to their attorneys, talk to, uh, went to classes on how to negotiate, which unless you went to school and were trained to be a lawyer mm -hmm. or took law classes, you've never been trained on how to negotiate. <laughs> Everyone's learned by just the barter system of, well, I'll shoot for 20,000. They're going to come in at 10. We'll try, we'll, we'll try and agree around 14, 15,000. Yep. Right. And you, you play that, you know, cut the baby in half BS. And you were never trained. Right. But these guys were trained and given, you know, word trackings to keep to them. 
And, you know, unless you've been trained, you're not going to learn it. So you've been negotiating the wrong way, and you followed what they wanted you to do. They led you down a path right. to work easier for me. And convinced you that you wanted to go there, yeah. too. Well, but it was and, in and, your and, best and, interest that you do this, Larry. They and, offered you and, candy and, this started, and yeah. down that trail. Yeah. Yeah. Get this and we're back started. to Larry and his van with candy. Yes. <laughs> you can't have a van with like no one snap, Like the snap-on truck. Yeah. 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 Well, but you got to remember that, okay, so let's talk about, we've talked about this in other shows, that who are the people that are estimating today? They've been in the industry since, computers have been around a long time. Right. 20 years. Yep. So a lot of the people that are in here don't know it any different. Right. They came into right. an industry, that's just how right. it is. Right. Well, they they're just brand new to this industry, and they were misguided by well, somebody who trained the wrong way. Somebody said this well, what we I do. Well, I go through so many shops. I go, there's nothing wrong with it, Kristen. I mean, I, we, we, we get along. We have no problem getting paid what we need to get paid from the, from the insurance companies. And I kind of laugh and go, <laughs> You don't know what you're not making. <laughs> right. You, you know, I get along with all the adjusters. We have a great relationship together. I go, no, you don't. Yeah. At the end of the day, when the door closes, we laugh about you. We laugh that your shop thinks we have relationships, that you think we're friends, that you think that you're getting something from me, that you think that you're controlling this process. Because it, it, the one shop, that, the last shop that argued with us, we asked him what's your average paid claim, he went $2,800 and we went, <laughs> even CCC says that you should be about $1,500 right, more. Right. So you're definitely not getting what the you need. Almost double you're that. definitely not working yeah, no. well with your partners. Um, they're enjoying using you. You're, you're a tool you're for basic, them. You're basically become yep. their slave and you're obeying properly. Yep. So yes, they have you exactly where they want you. <laughs> Remember yeah. back in the day, and, I, and I'll just say, you know, it's, and it's just take a little bit, take a little bit, turn the heat up, turn the heat up like your frog and eventually the water's boiling. You're like, whoa. Back in the day, when I had my shop, we had one person in the front office for at least two, maybe more people in the back. Mm -hmm. One person for 2.1 people. We're almost now in cases one to one or possibly even more than two people yeah. in the office for every person in the back. Where'd that money, where's the money coming from to pay for that? We were at right. one shop, there was four people in the front oh, office God. for one person that in the back. That was freaking right. crazy. Right. We told it, them to fire them. They said HR won't let us do that. Right, right. I mean, they, they had double the staff in the front office that yeah. actually existed in the back. But there were days when you could have five or six techs in the back and you had one lady answering the phone and maybe one owner was up there that also was the estimator or yeah. whatever. Uh, folks, that model worked. Yeah. Right? The job really hasn't changed. The car is harder to repair now. You actually need to be spending more time in the back. Actually, you the, only thing, the only thing you really need to add to a shop is one guy in the back who knows how to look up the repair information and tell people what yeah. to do yeah. and leave the, sh the front office the way it is. But no, we've been conditioned by people outside this industry that you need the, the set up office. You need the men and women's bathroom, the handicap office, the playroom for the kids. You need the front desk with two or three CSRs to call in all the time. You need two to three estimators. Right. You need you need the, the office manager, the shop manager, the bookkeeper. You need all these people working for you. And I'm like scratching my head looking Who's at fixing it. cars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? And you gotta rekey because Larry, that's good for your customers. Yeah. That's good for you. That's going to help your customers get paid right. That's going to help you get paid right. It's going to ease the um, transition process uh, You for know, us. I'm sorry. Uh, if I wanted your opinion, I'd tell it to you. <laughs> so until then, shut up. It's basically what I tell them. I don't yeah. want to hear your opinion. Well, the bottom line is, is Well, that you saw a body shop. Yeah, the, the operative word there is used to. Yeah. Right. You went to someplace else that you're making nowhere near the money as a shop owner. So guess what? You didn't know what you were doing. You failed. That's okay. I understand yeah. that. You went and got your nice job, but that's great. The Take shop's it. job, so we'll just, uh, so like a nice, the shop's job is to, just to write the proper repair plan that gets them compensated to mm -hmm. fix the vehicle safely. As per, uh, as back to pre-loss condition as best right. as humanly possible, following the OEM procedures It is protocol. the insurer's job to, pay the to bill. reach that payment, right? To, and that's right. why to, the to people- To reimburse the owner. That's why the, the people vehicle. that handle that are called adjusters because they adjust, Just. which means they have to, you know, figure out differences. Once they accept right liability, estimates. once they validate that they're paying this claim, right. Then they're just coming in to, to, right. to try and figure out the price and, of and it. And for yeah. all of you shops that miss the old days, you mean, I go back to like my days when, when I started and you know, you're a PCT and you've got 15 or so estimators that report to you and we had local claims offices and all that. The world was pretty good then. Everybody goes, yeah, the world was pretty good. Yeah, you guys screwed it up. You started doing the reeky and doing everything. So there wasn't really a need for me to have a quality all the trained field adjuster force. the collision repair industry are collision repair related. Yeah. It's all back to the collision repairers. The only difference is, is that the insurance companies were smarter in their research to figure out how to capitalize on it. They didn't come you. in with a Trojan horse. Thank you. They went ahead and walked in because you opened the doors. Uh, Mark, you let just, them in. I just want to say in summary, he just said I'm smarter. I know. I got that. Yeah, okay. Thanks. I got that. <laughs> so got that. our takeaway from let, this let show. Let me make a note. Yeah. 
where it's going to be a yeah, banner. We're going to use that later. We have a show from last year where she says I was right. I know, I'm, I'm I know. putting. I'm going to have that like a big vinyl quote on the wall for the next <laughs> uh -huh. time you come in here in a Titan time stamp. So the bottom line, folks, is there's right absolutely once. zero reason for you to rekey in your collision repair center. If you think about it and spend time, what does that you'll, sign prove you'll me wrong? Find, <laughs> yeah, you'll find you're giving yourself excuses to hold on to an old bad habit. And it's quite honestly, it's time to cut the cord. Yep. Your customers need it. You need to make the adjustments a little smarter and a little bit better in your area because this is a long road that's not going to end soon. The cars are just going to get more complicated. Yep. The estimates to repair them are just going to get larger. We're at 300 lines now. We're going to be at five, 600 lines here, you know, probably in well, no think time about at it. all. The, the, the average initial estimates like 20 or 30 lines and the repair is like 350. Right. What are we even messing with the first right. one for? Yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of pointless and it's kind of good to go. So basically stop the rekey yep. and start using that time to better yourself in customer service yep. and better yourself in your OEM if research. If you don't believe us, read Collision Repair Technicians United. There's plenty of posts on there from people who've taken our classes and even people who haven't taken our classes who yeah. just followed what we said. Just stop and, it. Oh, it works. Yeah, it's a little bit of a transition, but it works. Yeah, it works. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Repair University.